We, we came shopping for a new little mini fridge and our glasses, they were at Lynn's Crafters and so we wanted to pick them up and then we decided to come here to have dinner, an early dinner and go home. And you're from Newport? No, Waldport. Waldport. Waldport, sorry. That's okay. Um, so can you kind of retrace what happened that day? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of things we can retrace. Uh, as Sherry said, we came over here to do some shopping and we tried several times to come in here, backtracking off that. We did the shopping, and the last thing I remember is parking the vehicle and walking to the door. After that, I don't remember anything other than waking up in the hospital bed, and my sister's in there, my wife is in there, and what's my sister doing sleeping in my room? And But as far as things that happen, for me, it's... It's just too quick. And, uh, I don't really remember a lot of it. She remembers all the particulars that went wrong before we got here, you know, to the hospital, that is. So I'll let you finish that part out. Um, we came in through the door. The, you have two doors when you enter the, the building. The second one, he didn't make it through. And I turned around to talk to him, and he was on the ground and not breathing. And I screamed out, call 911. And I started yelling in his ear, breathe, you always listen to me, breathe. And two waitresses came running from out of the back and started CPR on him. Um, the young man called 911. A lady came into the, into the door a few minutes later and said she was a CPR trainer and started in working on George. We didn't. We weren't able to find this lady, and I'm telling you, if we could find her and just say thank you, we would be ecstatic. Um, the ambulance driver knew that I wasn't from this area, so he took the time to put me in the front of his truck so that I could go along with George to the hospital. They worked on him quite a while. They did get him revived and put him in the ambulance, and off to the hospital we went. They. Everybody, they were like angels. They, they were just all in their place, and they all did their job, and they, it was just unbelievable. I'm, I'm still speechless over it. How did you feel in the moment? You were... I was in a state of shock. I, I really didn't have a feel except for that I was afraid I was going to lose my husband. He's my best friend, and to have someone... Um, that you count on to, to talk with daily, not be there, your brain just does funny things. So, I'm glad he's here. <laughs> I'm definitely glad he's here. If it hadn't been for all the people in the right places, us being in the right places, a lot of things wouldn't happen the way they did. And even the aftercare, after I left the hospital, cardio rehab, things like that, and, and the follow-ups with the hospital for cardiology and everything else. It's just been absolutely amazing. Uh, both facilities, both here in Eugene, plus the ones at Florence. Everybody has just been exceptional. All the doctors and nurses and staff at different places we've been to. Uh, and yeah, it's kind of weird running around with a little box into your chest again, but that's the way life's going to be, and it's changed my life a lot in that I look at things a little differently. Apparently, I wasn't meant to go that day, or something else I had to do about it. I don't know what it is yet, but we're trying to figure it out. We're trying to figure it out. Me enjoying his company. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, when I was speaking with the two ladies who helped perform CPR that day, um, they mentioned you were screaming and you were really overwhelmed. And they said that um, when the paramedics arrived, they kind of took over and there was a point in time where George took a breath. Yes. Do you remember that? I do remember that. What was that? I will never forget the way he looked. Um, he... Um, you could tell he was gone. You could tell that, that he just wasn't there anymore. 
and it, it was that was my whole world going down the tubes right then. And those two girls doing what they did and seeing him take a breath, he, he actually took a couple of little breaths, it just it gives you hope, it gives you, he'll be here one more minute, he'll be here one more minute, you know. I couldn't do this again if I had to. I don't want to. <laughs> so, yeah, I, they were fantastic. And the woman who came in after them, I can't say enough about these people. From them to the hospital to, we had a male nurse, his name was Nolan, and he made sure that George was okay to leave the hospital because his INR was too high. Um, he wasn't supposed to leave. And they were, they were going to um, discharge him. And he said, no, no, I've talked to the pharmacist and we're not doing that. They're staying. So their ability to look at everything and see everything going on, their, their care, their, their love and attention, I mean, all of it. They, they not only showed us the medical side, but they showed us the, the comical side and the, the love and the care that goes into it. And they would come in and ask if he needed anything and then ask me if I needed anything. <laughs> and I was perfectly fine, perfectly capable of getting my own. But yeah, they were, they were concerned about the whole of us, not just parts of us. That was good. Um, at what point, I'm sure when all of it happened, you were tense and you were just like terrified. At what point did you relax and know that everything was going to be okay? I think when my sister-in-law came and she told me that the medication they were giving George through the, uh, the vein was to keep his heart beating no matter what. And then I realized that, okay, They've got control. They they know what they're doing. I can sit back. You never you never totally do. You you wake up at every little sound. You pretend you're asleep because you don't want to interrupt them. But you wake up at every sound. Now if he doesn't if he doesn't uh, snore at night, I'm listening. <laughs> you know, it it's just a different kind of thing. I don't think it's a snoring so much as is my respiration. Yeah. Of how I just, breathe and stuff like just that. Just as long so as he since, keeps breathing. Are you okay? She wake me. Are you okay? Yeah, why? Well, you're not breathing right. This is the way I've been breathing for a long time. <laughs> so you get woken up a lot at night. Sometimes. Not, sometimes. 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 Um, okay, so you mentioned how, how grateful you are for the people who stepped in. Um, you know, the community and the fire department has been working to encourage the community to step in and just perform those chest compressions. What would you say to somebody maybe watching this who might be hesitant or scared? What kind Don't of be. Do it. Don't be afraid. Do it because even if the outcome is terrible and they lose their person, you tried. If you don't try, there is no succeeding. These two girls tried and they succeeded. So what, what is a day of your life taking a training versus performing that, the training that you received on somebody else and extend their life, you know, a week, three years, five years, whatever their life expectancy might be for eight hours of your time. And as a former uh, first responder, I've done it. I've done CPR. But it's just something that once you've done it once, and that person is, whether they survived or not, you know you've done the best you can give that person the care they need at that time. And it's, I don't see why people don't do it. Just get out and do it. Take the course. It's not that hard. And people who own businesses, train your people. Get the fire department to come over and give you a, a hands-on deal of, of just showing you how to do it. Just anything to keep that person breathing. It just takes a few minutes to keep them breathing to get the real help there that, that is needed. Not that you're not real help, but they'll know more of what to do. Get that first help into somebody there. Their chance to survive so much. Yeah. Percentage just goes up. 
Um, and how is your health today, if you don't mind me asking? My health is fine today. Matter of fact, they uh, kicked me out of physical therapy today. <laughs> <laughs> <This is good laughs> they said you completed it, so now I'll go on. So I'm going to continue doing, you know, the walking, the exercise, and all that, and the roll into the gym and keep continuing doing it. Uh, it feels good to get back in some type of shape. Uh, yes, I lost the weight over, which is fine with me. I want to lose the weight anyway, mm -hmm. but. Uh, it feels good. Actually, feels good. And how do you feel today being able to reconnect with the people who helped save your life? Well, <laughs> I'm really choked up about it, to be honest with you. It's something that, first of all, you don't expect to be standing there and having all these people, uh, let alone them putting their education, lives, and and careers and, and their expertise as a whole and to you to make sure that you're still sitting here where you could be somewhere else. I'm very choked up by it. Uh, there are certain people I wish could have attended, but unfortunately for their duties or whatever, they're not able to attend. But the ones that did attend, my own respect to them. Just, Even those that didn't, yeah. you made them live. And they created awards for them yes. too. Yes. Them. How did you feel giving, giving them the awards? I wish I would have prepared a speech better. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish I'd have been able to talk. But, uh, it was something. I always wondered what these people looked like, who they were. Uh, you know, you can hear people describing them to you, you know, you know, color hair and all this, but until you actually see them and say, wow, you're the one that did this. You know, it, it's just right on the bottom of your heart. When all this is going on, you don't see who's around you, you just hear the help. You, you really don't see who's there and who's not there. You just, you just have that help. It's, it's, it's weird, you know. Having been in law enforcement, first responder and stuff like that, and a, and a sergeant, you know, you keep your character in. You keep that straight face to go through your situations. Uh, I can't keep a straight face today, let alone, you know, without tears. That's how emotional it is to me. Yay to Olive Garden. <laughs> What would you say to them if they were standing right here? I'm sorry? What would you say to them if they were standing right here? Thank you for everything you guys ever did. And keep up the good work. Uh, I'm with you guys 100%. I'm here. It can be done. I don't know what else to say about it. It's God sent. God said. Okay, I go turn it up again. <laughs> I, I guess this is the first interview I've ever done where I started crying. So. <laughs> oh, well, thank you guys so much. Is there anything else you'd like to add or talk about? He's going to stay with me for a long time. <laughs> He's going to be with me for a long, long time. And you said you just retired. Any fun retirement plans? We're going to finish our house. We've been remodeling our house forever. Yeah. <laughs> and we haven't had time because he worked and was off on weekends, and I was off midweek. So, And we like to do things ourselves. So that's what we're doing right now. Next, we'll be traveling. Each other. That's it. We like to spend time together. We enjoy it. So, yeah. Perfect. Okay.